Welcome to the Video Game Compendium. In this episode, we will be analyzing how time can be used as a game mechanic, and we'll talk about whether or not we think it works. So, what's the first video game you remember playing that had a time limit in it? The first game that I played that had a time limit that I can remember anyway is probably Super Mario World. Okay, on Super Nintendo, right? Right. But that wasn't the first Mario you played. You played Super Mario Bros. on the NES first, right? But that's the first one that I actually remember playing. Yeah, so that's my point. Like, So why... Why did they put a, t a time limit in Super Mario Brothers? One uh, and two and three? Probably to force you to get to the end. Well, I would say as a, a constraint to make sure that you don't just sit there. Plus, it was tied to points. And back then, like that was a big thing, is arcades and points. Right, okay. But, uh, in the, so in the home console... Uh, generation of, you know, Sega and Nintendo, no one cared about... Okay, fewer people cared about high scores. It wasn't a metric that, you know, anyone really bragged about. I, I beat Sonic the Hedgehog level 1 with 10,000 points. No one ever said that. I mean, in the right circles, they probably did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, the, the people that make the Sonic fan fiction... Pr oh. Oh. Can't can't make fun of those no, people. No, we can't. They're going to be our biggest uh, supporters, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I mean, the, I would say that people still probably used it as a metric for a while because they were still in games for, what, years? Like, through Super Nintendo, uh -huh. for sure. Uh -huh. But I don't think that was necessarily the whole idea behind time. Okay, so like, so it was it was a method to keep people moving? But uh, at the same time, you and I didn't even notice that it was a thing. So, would you call that a failure? Not necessarily. Because, like, you have to remember, like, when I played the first Mario Bros, I I was completely tiny, itty-bitty, wee lad, right. me. And so, I guess back then, a time limit wasn't anything to me. But when I finally grasped the concept of what it meant to have a time limit was when I was playing Super Mario World and trying to beat the entire game because, you know, you could actually save that game and, like, go from this level to this level to this level and then quit if you uh -huh. wanted and then go back and then each level had a certain time limit and some of the levels were longer and I was... If you were slow, you wouldn't be able to beat it in time. I mean, I can't think of a level in Super Mario World that I couldn't beat I know more than enough time. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, so I don't think that uh, it really needed to be in those games. But I understand. It it seems like we've come to an understanding on why they were in the game because of the landscape of arcade video games or video games at the time, mostly coming from arcades, and right. uh, uh, some incentive to keep people moving, which arguably didn't really work. Uh, so, let me tell you about how I found out Sonic the Hedgehog had a time limit. Uh, I would. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, actually, I was in college, and uh, a friend of mine, uh, or a, a guy I didn't really know at the time, uh, I was playing video games on my laptop, and he goes, "Hey, you're good at video games. Can you help me beat Sonic the Hedgehog?" I was like, "Sure. Uh, yeah, e easy. What 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 are you having a problem with?" He was. <laughs> fighting uh metal mecha sonic metal sonic whatever they call him and as soon as the fight started he had a, a quick save and he would load the quick save two seconds into the fight sonic would just die <laughs> and i'm like dude what is wrong with your game i've never seen this before we load the quick save and two seconds he dies and then i noticed this little flashing two turns into a flashing one, turns into a flashing zero, and Sonic dies. And I had to ask this guy, why did it take you so long to get <laughs> to the final boss? And this was his last life. 
in the quick save. Jeez. So there's no way that he could he could be Mechasonic in two seconds. Yeah, well, I mean, you could try. You're not going to do it, no. but you could try. No, I mean, you couldn't. You couldn't make it across the screen to attack him one time, let alone... It was literally impossible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I don't see how it was conceivably possible. But, okay... So that uh, that's a funny story um, to me. But if you ask me that question, what's the first game I remember playing that had a time limit? It's still Sonic, but it's the underwater level. Or not level, but when you're underwater. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you drown. And like, how, <laughs> how messed up is that where you're like... <laughs> You're Sonic, and you're underwater, and then all of a sudden it's like, you need an air bubble now, otherwise you're going to drown and die. Yeah, and that added a a whole new layer to Sonic, because Sonic was about going fast and jumping and not running into things. But now, it's, it's, it's swimming, it's surviving. Even as a kid, you know that you can't breathe underwater. Somehow Mario gets to do it, but, uh, Sonic's in the real world, right? (laughs) <laughs> so he has to he has to actually I don't breed. know Italian plumbers are totally in the real world. <laughs> I don't think blue hedgehogs are. We can argue that. <laughs> yeah, we can argue that. Okay. So go ahead. So Sonic like they took the concept of time and applied it twice. Yeah. Where you have a time limit to get to the end and you have a time limit if under certain circumstances. So when you're underwater, you have to make sure that you get an air bubble or out of the water within the time limit otherwise you die yeah and that adds like a sense of urgency and uh suspense which i i think i i like that i can appreciate that well especially with that music there was that big sense of yeah oh man that even more than the punishment of drowning just that (laughs) (laughs) music hitting you and you're like oh god oh god oh god (laughs) so so this is an example of a, a a strict minutes and seconds counter that uh if you if you fail to meet the criteria you'll lose a life right right okay so this is so we're going to be talking about uh time um and how other other games have used it throughout the years uh so going back to suspense uh another game that comes to mind with time is the escape in final fantasy 7 oh right right you remember when you're this? in uh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're on the building. Yeah, in, in the, uh, the Shinra? Shinra building? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, um, what was this... Okay, did you ever fail because of the time limit when you played Final Fantasy VII? I never did, but I, I know people who did. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess... Alright, so someone out there failed. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> but the, What's the, funny the, is that someone might listen to this. <laughs> You'll know if it's you. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. I mean, I guess we can shame people, right? For being bad at games. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so... The first time I played it, you probably as well, I didn't know if they were gonna... If, if this timer was gonna be hard. So, even though uh, you finish with two minutes to spare, even if you're playing through casually, you don't know that, right? Right away. Right. So, uh, on replay, I guess it loses the suspense. But the first time you experience it, it's pretty suspenseful, right? Well, I think more suspenseful would be when you're fighting Emerald Weapon and you actually have, like, 20 minutes to finish the boss battle. Ah. Otherwise, it's game over. Oh, okay. So do you think that that boss fight lulled you into uh, a sense of security because of this earlier escape timer uh no just because the boss is so i i I don't want to say it's difficult because i mean if you're well versed in final fantasy 7 you know how to beat it and ruby weapon Mm -hmm. but it's a difficult boss in terms of i would say video game bosses and the timer doesn't make it any easier and it just makes it that more nerve wracking when you're like, right, "Oh right. shit, am I actually gonna beat this right. thing?" So uh, I'm I'm trying to think, but I feel like uh, I've played another game where there was a timer, but when you went into a battle, the timer would stop, and the timer doesn't stop in Final Fantasy VII. 
So the first right. time I encountered an enemy, and knowing, you know, there's there's random encounters in this game, this game could just decide to screw me over by throwing a bunch of useless battles in my face while I'm trying to leave. Yeah? Yeah. And it might. Yeah, so maybe that's I... what happened to your friend. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll hope that's well, what happened. They can take that excuse if they need it. Right. I just, I, I think overall, like Final Fantasy VII, the timers that they put in there, it, most of them weren't very tight. Even even Emerald Weapon wasn't very tight mm-hmm. when you play it. But it it adds that sense of urgency while you're playing. Yes, definitely. So uh, a game designer, if they want to add an, an extra level, say this is a really important part of the story or a part of the experience that you need to remember... And a way to cement that is to make it more stressful or suspenseful for the player. I guess, yeah. I mean, you could you could state it like that. I mean, so take uh, go back in t- or going back to Mario, mm-hmm. um, Mario Maker. A lot of the there's a lot of levels out there that have like 20 second timers. Oh, really? And it, okay. And if you don't do everything perfectly, you can die like literally centimeters from the goalpost interesting and okay so you know you'll be doing that one over and over and over again trying to get to the end in that super tight timer making sure you do everything perfectly uh-huh. wow okay so i have not i played uh, hours of mario maker but i have not come across a, a level like this so it's interesting that uh the creators have been able to take this mechanic that has existed since the first game that we all know and love and repurposed it right so okay and yeah because they're they're usually called speedrun levels so if you're mm-hmm. ever interested in that you can go look up speedrun levels on mario maker and you'll see like they have 20 second ones they have 40 second ones they even have like 300 second ones where again if you don't do oh. everything perfectly you're fucked <laughs> Man, like that's brutal. straight up that's brutal. yeah all right uh, i think we'll get back to speedrun um, but another game where I'm trying to figure out what what the designer was thinking when they put in this restraint. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to bring up Persona 3. When you're in Tartarus, Tartarus already has these uh, gates that you can only progress X number of floors until something in the story happens to unlock that gate. So why okay. add the Reaper? Uh, so... If, Anyone who, who doesn't know, Reaper will appear if you spend too much time in Tartarus in one night. Basically penalizing you for being slow or sloppy. Ah, uh, okay, so you think it's a punishment for being slow or a hurt, like a, something to prevent you from rushing ten floors in one evening? Probably both. Because I'm assuming that if you're really, really slow, it's going to punish you for being very, very slow. Because I'm not sure of the timer on the Reaper. It, uh-huh. Does the timer change based on difficulty? That's a good question, actually. I, I'm not sure. So there is no uh, timer visible to the player. So it doesn't say you will you have 10 minutes to explore Tartarus. Uh, right. You'll just get a notification from uh, Mitsuru at the beginning saying, you know, there's something there, etc. Uh, don't encounter it and if you do i do believe he's impossible to kill at least at the early stages of the game well yeah i mean even in any of the games that have the reaper uh you have to be probably like 70 to 100 well 99 but we'll just say 100 for the sake of being easy okay um it doesn't say anything about being like on easy mode or normal or hard like shortening or extending the time okay so i'm wondering if it's just like a you have x amount of time and but in that case easy mode battles are going to go quicker normal mode battles are going to go a little slower hard they're going to go even slower that's so it you're going to run into the reaper quicker if you're taking long battles yeah yeah so you'll be able to net fewer experience points uh per per tartarus session right right okay so i guess it theoretically it it's is a way of punishing you being slow but i also think it's meant to prevent you from going too far without it just appearing and being like hey basically stop here (laughs) 
in the name of love. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like it it might have come out uh, from people playtesting it and uh, just steamrolling Tartarus and uh, grinding too much. And then the, the designer goes, okay, we need a mechanic to prevent people from doing this. And they just threw it in there is honestly what it feels like to me. Okay. Well, so they did the same thing in Persona 5. Okay. Except for it was done a little bit differently. So in Persona 5, you would be on a level of what they called mementos. And in mementos, if you waited too long, it the Reaper would come. And you could go to the next floor down, and it, the Reaper would not follow you. But if you uh, waited too long on that floor, the Reaper would show up again. Okay, and so you, uh, do you know if you went back to the previous floor... Is he still the there, Reaper? or did, no, does he give there. you an, another period of time before he shows back up? It would be a period of time. Oh, okay. Mm. So you could cheese him. Uh, no. Well, okay. So there is a way to cheese him, but like that's a big spoiler that I'm not all going right, all to. Right. Yeah, don't. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to ruin it for anyone. So, uh, but yeah, the the Reaper is insanely hard. Uh, I managed to beat him on my own in my first playthrough but it was it was not fun all right like trying to beat him okay right, interesting so they okay so we talked about persona quite a bit uh let's get back to something more people probably encountered and uh that's auto scrollers so this is typically in a or it's more of an issue in platformers right. um uh, mario I, I can't off the top of my head think of a sonic level that did this where basically the the game screen will move across the level at a con or at a set speed, and you either have to keep up or die. Well, the uh, there was an auto scrolling level like at the end of Sonic Two where you're on the plane. Ah, oh, right, right. And Tails is piloting it, right? Yeah, yeah. he's piloting, and uh, he, you can jump, but like it's progressing through the level for you. Yes. Uh, what was the one where Sonic is snowboarding too? Because that's basically an auto scroller. It's like a variant of an auto scroller. Oh I would yeah. Uh huh. Because it's forcing you to move forward, but you, I mean, you have control over like how you jump. Right. So, uh, would you call this a time restriction? Because you fail, you di- you lose a life basically. And, right. And you you don't get to take your time. Well, you don't get it to, like, you are literally on the developer's time. Like, they set, they're like, okay, this level's going to take this long for you to beat, mm-hmm. and you have to do it, and you have to do every part of it. Right. And I think that's, I think that's the frustration with most auto-scrolling levels, is they're forced into doing something they are like, oh, well, this is boring as hell. Like, why am I doing this? Because <laughs> most auto-scroller levels are super boring tedious like yeah yeah the power rangers the movie the game power (laughs) rangers the movie the game for super nintendo had a couple auto scrolling levels that were like you had to like skate or uh, snowboard snowboard it was a snowboard okay i had to think about it and um those levels were the absolute fucking worst (laughs) like straight up i hated those levels in that game man i mean that game sucked to begin with i can't imagine just a Whoa. poorly impl- I, I, Whoa now. <laughs> fighting words. Uh, you're you're talking bad about a game that I love here. I know you do, but like I can speed run the, the No, I know the you the pa- uh, the Power Rangers game. Yes, you you have videos out there which are impressive. I'll give you that. The game still sucks. Uh, I, that's arguable. Okay. So is there an auto scroller <laughs> that you enjoy? Uh, I mean, I can't think of one in Mario. I would say the one that I had the most fun with was probably the the Power Rangers one, <laughs> but even then, it was it was not fun for me. Uh-huh. Mostly, it, oh, Sonic Adventure Two. Uh, okay. When when you're uh, skating down the street, that level was super. Oh fun. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. usually when I think of auto scrollers, it's it's two dimension. Right. Um, but. I mean, they're obviously not only in 2D games, but yeah, that's one I completely forgot about. Yeah, I I was just trying to think of, like, what fun I've had where it, like, I wasn't in control of the movement, just, well, not all of the movement. And yeah, Sonic Adventure 2 was great. Um, 
Sonic 2006 was bad. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> no, as a side note. As a, as a just general, general note. Yeah, that game was awful. So, uh, typically these auto-scrollers are, are thrown in to kind of spice up platformers. Or we'll say spice up very loosely. In an attempt to spice okay. up. How's that? In an attempt to change up the formula. Yeah. To add or give the perception of variety. But, uh, so the game Catherine, the whole game is an auto scroller, right? Pretty much. Yeah, because, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you're, because you basically, you're climbing up and mm-hmm. you have to make sure that you stay moving and all you have control over is basically the left, right, and pulling the blocks out. Yep. So, so Catherine, uh, not a super well known game. So, uh, I'll explain it a little bit. Basically, it's a puzzler, or a puzzle game, where you have to scale these walls of blocks, and all you can do is uh, climb up one block uh, and push and pull blocks to make steps for yourself. So, uh, uh, imagine playing Catherine without the auto-scroller. Um, well, I guess it kind of depends on... Because you can kind of circumvent the auto-scroller in that game, if you're moving fast enough and but the auto scroller is like on your ass essentially right and essentially if you do really well and you beat the auto scroller by a lot you do better in the game versus mm-hmm. if you narrowly beat it then it's going to be you you do worse and you feel like shit when a big <laughs> butt comes and smashes you against the wall and eats you spoilers spoilers i think that's first level stuff so it's no big deal I think it's the third boss, actually. The third boss of that game what's is the, the, the big... Butt? Is the butt. Mm, okay. It's a big butt. Yeah. And it's... So I, I completed that game recently, uh, even though I think it came out in 2011. It's been a while. Was it? Yeah, it's been... I think... Wasn't it before that? No, 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 Matt. It might have been that late. I think it was about, yeah, 10 or 11. Uh, great game. I really enjoyed it. But that game without the auto-scroller... Anyone can beat it, right? Well, yeah, because there's no challenge to it. So you can still get yourself into situations where you can't win if you pull the blocks wrong. Or uh, there are a couple enemies that can knock you off. But basically, yeah, uh, the the challenge is reduced to almost nothing. Yeah, and by the way, the game was released in 2011, PS3, Xbox 360. Yeah, you good. You good. You got that memory, bro. A little bit. All right, uh, but yeah. So without the auto scroller, there. I, where's the challenge, really? Yeah. And so there goes that concept of time being thrown back in, where they're like, "You have this much time to complete the level." And I guess it's like an alternate form of time because it's uh, because it's like it's, it's a not, checkpoint. Every X seconds, one of the layers will drop off. So so that's why I'm calling it an auto scroller, right? Even though you can and, surpass it, but it's not beat the level in a minute, it's beat this segment in 10 seconds, beat this segment in 10 seconds, and so on. Yeah, and so it's it's kind of like how Mario is set up where they have one time for you, because mm-hmm. you do have one time okay. to get to the end, but it it shows it differently. Like, it's instead of a timer counting down for you, it's these blocks are falling, so you have to make sure you don't, fall with the blocks yeah you gotta you gotta keep pace you gotta keep making progress uh any any other game like that you comes to your mind that's just straight auto scroller yeah um no not that i can think of okay so for completion uh i have to say side scrolling shooters like uh gradius i think fall under this but that's not where the core gameplay or the core challenge is so i don't i don't think they're worth talking about in this segment yeah i feel like they operate like it's part of the same mechanic but i feel like they operate differently because they're not focused on the side scrolling element yeah it's not a so much as it's don't die and (laughs) hit all these enemies yeah okay so i just wanted to put that out there uh so people don't give us a ton of tweets and and youtube comments saying you guys are dumb because you didn't think about this but uh, hey fuck you gradius but definitely if if there's other things that uh you guys think we didn't cover go ahead and uh you know reach out to us and let us know 
um, for completeness. All right. Right. Uh, okay, so now let, let's flip it. What about, um, I'm going to call this inverse countdown clocks. Uh, basically a, a, a tower defense or defend the thing type of gameplay. I mean, what thing are we defending and why are we defending it? Uh, anything. Just, so, um, Sunset Overdrive. My least okay. favorite parts of the game where you have to defend this thing from, from hordes. Oh, yeah. You remember this? Yeah, those... It, it, I think when I came over last, you had yeah. me do that part for you. Yeah, and even you struggled. Yeah. <laughs> it's not fun. It's just a waste. <laughs> but, see, that also had a countdown timer. It was like for yeah. f- five minutes or whatever, you have to defend the thing. Yeah. So, so I, I guess, yeah. It, oh, no, I get what you're saying. So it's like... Literally, you have to defend it for this long, otherwise uh, you fail. Yeah. I get what you're saying. So it, it's a, the inverse countdown clock. Instead of being punished for taking five minutes, you're required to survive for time five minutes. Yeah, that that was some real, like, shit. Yeah. <laughs> so if the game requires this mechanic in most of the gameplay, I'm okay with it. Like, like a tower defense type of situation... Uh, or so there's this game for the Sega Menacer. I think it was called Pest Control, where you have this gun, right, and you need to shoot bugs that are trying to eat the pizza. <laughs> Did you play this? <laughs> no, but it sounds amazing. It, is, it was so much fun, and uh, so the light would flicker on and off, and you can only see what's in your scope on the screen. So you have this pizza, and you don't know where the bugs are coming from. And you have to kill all the bugs before the pizza gets eaten. And okay. I really enjoyed that game. Hold on. I'm All I can find is a, a song by uh, the rapper called The Game called Pest Control. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> maybe he was inspired by Pest Control on, on the menace. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a Meek Mill disc, so. Oh, okay. So, you know. You know. All right. You know. So, so I, this is kind of like the auto scrollers thing. If the game requires it throughout the whole game, I'm okay with it. But when game designers try and throw it in to spice up or add variety, uh, it rarely is appreciated. Do you agree? I, well, I think it depends because like sometimes it can be fun. And it's like, oh, do this thing for this log. Or like in Tony Hawk series, they were like, do a, a manual or a combo for 20 seconds. And like trying to accomplish that like back in the day was super fun to do because it was an actual challenge and it was like actually testing mm. your abilities. But I think like in Sunset Overdrive's case where it was like defend the thing, like defend the soda fizz popping bullshit stand of <laughs> – thing that Orange these mute stuff. yeah that these guys are going to come attack it like it was just boring because it was like okay so i'm just basically going to play the game except horde mode so they took inspiration from uh call of duty zombies yeah it did feel like that quite a bit like i'm gonna knock call of duty again and again <laughs> and again because how fucking boring is that yeah and and to to take inspiration from it is kind of like you need to reflect on yourself if you're if you're looking to Call of Duty to improve. I mean, your they game. sell they sell well, which is probably why people look to them. But I don't think selling well should be your only point in like, oh yeah, we should copy this video game. <laughs> Great idea. Fair point. Couldn't agree more. All right. Because we could get into that argument about video games being art all day, but you and I both know that video games can be art, proven time and time again. Oh yeah, done. absolutely. And uh, one thing I don't think it's done enough is just analyzing a video game in itself. Like, look at the game and analyze it. Don't say, is it art? Don't compare it to another game. Just look at it and appreciate it and try and take something from it. Uh, so hopefully that's what we're doing today. Yeah, even though we did that last time with uh, Dark Souls a lot. But I guess we were arguing that Dark Souls, and when people say Souls-like games, like, it's frustrating, because right. everything's getting compared to it, even though 
It's just means it's a difficult game. Yeah. Cheap, lazy, lazy. That's Cheap lazy. and lazy. Cheap and lazy. Like me. What? Yep. Just, just like you. So, okay. So, <laughs> all of everything we've talked about so far, is there a time mechanic that you hate more than than these? Well, I wouldn't say I hate any of these time mechanics. I would say there are some that are more frustrating than others. Just because I feel like the developers obviously put it in there because they felt the need to, Mm -hmm. or they felt like it was necessary. Or that it improved the game's experience in some way. Right. And that may or may not be the case. Uh Uh-huh. But it, it can be, like, a fun thing, like... I think on all these examples, I've stated one thing that was good and one thing that was bad, at least one. And honestly, if if we had like a list, like a huge fucking list of of stuff that I could look at that just had these mechanics, I could probably sit there and pick and choose. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, so uh, interesting you said that. So in doing a little bit of research for this topic, it's really hard, at least with my Google skills, uh, to come to find a document that talks about these game uh, game mechanic tropes. Right. So well, I don't think people are I don't think thinking about it enough. Yeah, it, I don't think it's talked about or thought about very much as, like, time in itself. Mm-hmm. Mainly because we're so used to being shown, like, you have a time limit or you, you have X amount of time to do this. Mm-hmm. And, like, I would say a game that... Uh, no, Final Fantasy Tactics doesn't do that. Like, nope. There are certain certain games where you don't have a time limit to do anything. And you can just sit there and think about something for as long as you want, and it won't matter, it won't affect the game at all. Yes. Uh, yeah, so let's let's follow that a little bit. Um, I'm th- I, I was looking at my game shelf, for specifically for games that have a time element in them, and I was surprised when I looked at things like The Last of Us. I mean, the story implies that time is crucial, but you can waste all the time of the world in that game. You you can wait 20 minutes for that flower face dude to, like, walk behind a corner so you can run up and stab him. It's called the clicker. Get it right. All right. My apologies. But, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's really interesting to see a game that should care about time but gives you the freedom to explore, gives you the freedom to come up with your own strategies uh, without this time hindrance. So I think that was so they could focus more on the story and make it feel more real to you. Because when you're playing as those characters, they don't want you to be worried about time necessarily. They want you to get involved in Joel or Ellie as a character, and they want you to play as him. And like, if it takes you five ten minutes to kill the baddies you know then so be it that means you spent five or ten more minutes with them Mm -hmm. than you would be if they gave you a two minute timer and said go that's yeah absolutely so not imposing this restriction uh can actually increase the immersion absolutely interesting at least when when we phrase it like this or when i phrase it like this that's how i feel about it because when it comes down to Last of Us especially, like that's one of my favorite games of all time. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I love that game so much is because of the story and the characters and just getting involved in their world. So the more time I can spend in that game, the better. Like I beat it like I think ten times now. So Wow. I don't think I beat any game ten times. Well, you need to get on that. Because <laughs> Resident Evil Four I think I beat like eighteen times. Oh my god. Resident Evil 4, I played a number of times, but it did not surpass 10. Well, it was a good game. Uh, you, the Wii version st- is the superior version. Dude, there's too many games, man. There's too many games that, to play. I disagree. Well, okay, there is too many games because <laughs> every time I at your wall, every dude. time every time I go to the game store, I'm like, "Ooh, I want that and that and that." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then I'm like, I don't have enough time to play all these. Yeah, I I wish I loved a game enough. To beat it ten times, but as of right now, I do not. Yeah, there are some games that I'm surprised you haven't beat ten times. Uh, me too. Uh, Nights in the Nightmare, probably my favorite game. 
of the the 2000 to 2010. Uh, when did that come out? I want to say maybe 2008, 2009. It was definitely before a, 2010. I'm testing you right now. You okay? I'm looking it up. Oh, okay, you are. All right. Well, while, while you look that up, I brought it up because it also has a time mechanic, but it was my least favorite mechanic in the game. Uh, super creative game. Uh, you... Okay, so it was originally on the DS, and you control this ghost, this wisp around, and the battlefield is set up like a tactics isometric view, uh, and you get to place your, um, characters on it, and, uh, you inspirit them, and they'll do an attack, and while they're attacking, the enemies are attacking... There's these bullet patterns that you have to weave through and pick up crystals. And there's just so much going on and it's so exciting. But there's this time mechanic that just shut my game down the first time I played through it. And uh, it was pretty heartbreaking. Because there's so much to do in that game. To focus solely on time management, is is uh, it was the least fun for me. Um, what year did you say it came out? I think... I want to say 2009. So, came out September 25th, 2008 in Japan. June 2nd, 2009. Ah. In America for Nintendo DS. And then PSP, was, it came I out... Was 2011? Eh, wrong. <sighs> April 22nd, 2010 in Japan. And November 9th, 2010 oh, in America. Oh, come on. That was close. At, <laughs> I'm not saying you weren't close. I'm just saying you were wrong. Man, I'm usually terrible at dates, but... I guess the things you care about. That was part of the Department Heaven series. Yes. And uh, the only one that really had a time element to it, uh, I don't think Yggdra Union did. Yeah, I don't think... Yggdra Union? No, I don't think it did. Also a great game. Totally recommend any any of those games. Riviera, Yggdra Union, Gun Gunner. Riviera was like uh, a visual novel, correct? It was very close kind to of. a visual novel tactic. Not tactics. Um, yeah, turn-based RPG, strong visual novel aspect to it. O- originally then, on the Game Boy Advance, but they put all four of the Department Heaven series out for PSP as well. Eventually. Yeah, eventually. Gun Gunner then, was the only one that was only on PSP. Isn't it Gung Near? Yeah, but Gun Gunner, if people want to search it, they have a easier time trying to type it in so that's g-u-n-g-n-i-r in case you want to know how to spell it yep uh published by atlas developed by sting yeah sting developed all of them yeah correct oh yeah, yeah okay super good games so interesting fact sting was founded a m- month after i was born really same year and everything yeah oh. I I don't know what year you came out, Casey. To uh, eighty nine. Yeah. All right, there we go. I'm, <laughs> I'm three for four. <laughs> that was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. You're old man. Okay, so so nights in the nightmare. I I did my little rant about time. Casey, do you have anything to say about that? Uh, I know you played nights a little bit, but did did this impact you at all? Not really. Okay. The nights in the nightmare was fun. And I remember, like, having fun with it, but I don't remember it being, like, super time-heavy. Like, I don't remember that being the main component or, like, anything that lasted with me. Right. No, it's it's absolutely not the main component, but you can very easily find yourself in a situation where you're screwed. Right. <laughs> uh, so, that was a bummer for me. Because I was focused on so many other aspects of the gameplay than the time and it got away from me i screwed it up but it didn't ruin the game i think the biggest bummer for time for me like thinking back would be like super monkey ball because each level had a timer Mm -hmm. and like some of the later levels were either long or just very difficult to execute yeah if you like if you're not like on speed run level where you're like just gonna <laughs> zip right to the end and just like poof, right through, um, it it was something that if you didn't know exactly how to do it, it, you could spend the entire sixty seconds or whatever just messing around trying to get through that goalpost, and it was just so frustrating. And I remember uh, 
right when you got down to, I think, 10 seconds, he would go, hurry up! And I'd be like, <laughs> no! Dude, no. <laughs> yeah, the, so that is the thing about time restrictions that we've talked about so far, that that restrict you from exploring. Um, as, as long as they're not super loose, like Sonic the Hedgehog and uh, Super Mario Brothers, uh, yeah, you don't get to do whatever you want. You have to... Uh, like, just say, oh, there's something over there. I can't go explore it right now because I have this time constraint. And if I go explore that, then I'm going to die. Right. But there are games like Mario where you have t- way too long for each level and you could spend yeah an obscene amount of time exploring the entire level if you wanted. And then there's not that much of a payoff for exploring it anyway. Well, actually, no, I shouldn't say that. Mario does have some pretty cool... Uh, stuff Easter to eggs. find. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, so, do you? When I say trauma center, do you think there's a time constraint? Um, I wouldn't say it's like a a normal time constraint because they don't really time you. But as you do shit, the the patient's life bar essentially yeah. goes, and it starts going down, kind of like Surgeon Simulator, where the the life bar. Or their health bar just starts depleting, mm-hmm. and you the things you do can make it go back up, but so it's not a conventional timer, right? So I would not have thought about this uh, if I didn't go take a look at my game collection and try and apply time to a- every game on it, because they, they I think they're pretty creative with how they manage to time put a time restriction on you without you know. Uh, a ticking counter or making you feel like you need to rush for an arbitrary reason. So it's, I mean, you cut a dude open. Yeah. You can't just, you know, take all day to try and excise these tumors. <laughs> you cut a dude open. <laughs> you literally cannot take all day with no, this. You got to hurry, you man. Gotta, he's bleeding. He, he's going <laughs> to run gonna out of die. blood. He's only got so much blood. <laughs> yeah. That's why you give him more blood. Then we have all day. It don't matter. <laughs> Just <laughs> blood. Hook him up to the blood tap. <laughs> yeah, because they have those. Just blood taps. Yeah, I need typo here. Yep, typo positive. All right, here we go. Turn it on. <laughs> squeak, squeak, okay. squeak. Yep. All right. Now just give him the blood. Yeah, he's right, got the good. blood. All right. Uh, let's. Uh, we'll come back in an hour. Yeah, let's go see a movie. Come back. We'll be fine. <laughs> we got plenty of blood. <laughs> That is not how it works in real life, people. No. Just in case you were wondering. Or in Trauma Center. Or in Trauma Center. <laughs> Which is... It doesn't work in real life or in fake life like that. No. No. So, so moving on to what I think is a more preferable way of using time. But I can also argue that it's more punishing. And that's using a time restriction that doesn't result in a death, but... It's going to give you a bad score, a bad reward. It's going to hold back something from you. So, like in Devil May Cry... Yes. When you... Well, it, it went off style meter, but like your style meter also went off how long it took you to chain together your combo. So right. if you took too long, your your style meter would like crash and burn and die. And, and you get nothing. Like, yeah, and then <laughs> at the end, it'd be like D rank, and you'd be like... Fuck you, that was totally an S rank, bro. It wasn't triple S, though, and if it's not triple S, it's, it's basically a D rank. Eh, basically, you're a failure yeah. anyway. I, I mean, I was never that great at that game. No, so that I was game's always... too hard, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so fun, but I don't think I've got uh, above a double S after, like, the second level. It's just, it gets to be too much. I don't remember. Like, I remember playing Devil May Cry 3 a lot, because I, I like that game, mm-hmm. but I don't remember any of my scores... I just remember they weren't good enough. Well, you just got to be more flashy. I know, right? But not that kind of flashy that you're thinking of. Uh, you know, like style flashy, like the way you do things. <laughs> oh, style! <laughs> oh, like style! I got yeah, you. yeah, not yeah. Like, not like the kind that gets you in trouble. Yeah, not the kind that'll land you in a trench coat <laughs> running across a baseball field. Yeah. You know. I got you. So that's what I was doing wrong. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I mean. Time is a part of style. Yeah. And what what's more stylish than uh, than than playing games really quickly and being a speedrunner? 
I don't know. I've been watching a lot of speedruns lately, so... I know, dude, they're pretty addicting. I don't get it. I, I, I think it, part of it for me might be that I get to see the highlights of a game in seven minutes instead of playing it for 30 hours. That's appealing, right? Well, if you can complete a 30-hour game... Well, I guess there are some 30-hour games that you can complete in seven minutes. Yeah. So I shouldn't say that. Yeah. However, comma, it, that's not something that is typical. Like, to me, the appeal of speedrunning, it's always games that I beat. Okay. And it's always to see how they do things. So, like, uh, when I watched the, the Portal speedrun for the first time, I was like, holy God, how is he... He just... He flew through the wall, quite literally. Yep. Holy, he just skipped that entire section. And it was just like one of those things where it was just amazing to me. And then some of them, like sometimes I'll watch 100% speedruns where they have to complete the entire game and do everything. Yeah. And for some reason, those are more appealing to me just because I like seeing everything that like I had to do to beat the game and them do it at a super rapid pace mm-hmm. where it took me 20 hours. It took them and i'm like holy hell yeah uh, yeah pokemon done in like three hours i mean come on i i can't keep track of how much time i played pokemon yeah but see i think part of the fun of pokemon like personally for me is going through and like collecting and exploring yeah and, and the the side games and learning about you know the pokemans yeah like I'm not I'm not knocking speedrunners on this, but I I think for me personally the enjoyment from like a game like Pokemon is the exploration aspect. Oh, absolutely. I've I've never watched a speedrun of like The Last of Us just because I don't feel like it would be very entertaining to no, me. No, I don't even know if people run The Last of Us. Oh, they do. Oh, they do. I I I've, I've seen it like on my feed, but I've never watched it. Okay, I see. So, have you seen uh Halo speedrun? Yeah. While I don't... uh, Halo is not my favorite game. I did play through the campaign with my brother. And watching people speedrun that never made me... Like, nothing else has made me feel more like a sheep. Because I just... I mean, I sat down and I'm like, Okay, you tell me where to go, I'm gonna do it. And I just did that for the entire campaign. And and other people, just the way... They they want to problem solve and the way their minds work to find all these exploits, it's pretty fantastic. Well, to be fair, they also use tools to assist them in finding those exploits. Uh yeah, that's true. So, it, it's not always just their mind. It's oh, I wonder what this tool can show me. Oh, if these enemies spawn here, this wall suddenly becomes translucent and i can run through or something yeah. stupid like that yeah all right i think we, we digressed a little bit um but getting back to how time won't kill you but it'll punish you um i think you mentioned until dawn okay yeah tell me about that because i've never played that until dawn it, well it's a horror game but they it's full of quick time events kind of like asura's wrath okay where you have X amount of time to complete this task, and if you fail, sometimes it could be death of a character. Ah. And that the whole point of the game is to play through and have people survive, essentially. Survive the night. Okay. So The game, the movie, <laughs> the video game. So what, what's I your punishment for, for failing these time restrictions? You lose uh, a dude? Or, yeah, or, like, it, it can alter the story at certain times. Um, there are certain things that are set in stone, but if you do something too slow um, and something happens to a character, it will impact the story later. Like, that happens several times. Ah, oh, okay. So, it, it, it actually changes based on your reaction, and they also give you a bunch of, like, decisions and then there'll be like a little timer next to you that's like you have this long to make a decision and if you don't it makes one for you oh see i don't like that they're making a decision for you i i see why they did it because they want you to to make a decision not yeah they Uh, don't want you to think about it they just want you to to decide okay because in 
in these high stress situations like they're in, like literally a murderer is coming after you, you don't have time to sit there and think about uh-huh. it. So I think they were going for like the realistic approach versus the yeah, it's a video game. You can think about it. They're they're like, no, you're gonna fucking make a decision right now, or you're gonna die. But see, I I don't know if the decision that they made for you was random or not. Oh, okay. So so you don't know how long I can last in the game if I just don't make any decisions. It's gonna be over right. in about a couple of minutes, right? No, it wouldn't be over in a couple minutes oh. because they have a ton of setup. Oh, okay. But if you don't make a decision, like, because there are parts where you walk around, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not are, all. Are those parts timed or no? No. Okay. Well, no, I don't think so. I don't remember too well. I beat that game three times too. What? And I don't, I don't remember if all those times were, or all those walking around times were timed specifically. I don't think they were. Okay. So it appears that the time mechanic didn't help cement anything with you. Well, the the one, like, the small quick time event timers, yes, those, like, I can remember certain decisions that I made the first time I played okay. just because it put me under such, like, a stress where it was like, make the decision or die, and I was like, okay, I, oh, oh no, <laughs> that was the wrong decision. So how many times can a game do that before the time doesn't matter anymore because your every decision must be made quickly therefore none of them are more important than the others presentation the way they do it okay would then change how you perceive that okay so on its own it's it's not enough to make you care about the game any I, any more ne- than okay not necessarily but i i would say that it helps like it with a game like that where it's all high stress situations mm-hmm. It definitely helps that the presentation you, is good. Yeah, the presentation was good, and they they did things that made you mem- remember like this specific event happened, and this is why you died, uh, and this is how you died. Uh-huh. All right, can I can I tell you about my favorite uh, low stress time mechanic in a game? Yeah. All right, I mentioned this last time. Dead Rising. <laughs> Dead Rising is so fun. <laughs> because, I mean, these notifications just pop up. Jeff has been killed. I don't know Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently and I didn't get Jeff. to him in time. <laughs> well, you know, maybe if you would have ran to Susie, she would have survived. But no, you messed up. Yeah, and what's my punishment? I never get to know Susie. But... And Say you missed out on an achievement, probably. Uh, probably. I mean... Technically, I was not good at that game, but man, was it fun. Dude, the best thing, though, is when you're trying to get the Mega Man suit, uh-huh. and you have to kill the entire... So there was like, what, 30, 37,500 people in Willamette? Okay. And you had to kill the entire population of zombies. <laughs> really? And that's Yeah, and you got the, the Mega Man suit for it. Okay. Yeah, I never got that. Oh, I love that. That is pretty solid, though. It, it wasn't a timed event, but uh-huh. that's one thing I remember about Dead Rising that was just super fun. I had a friend. We would just take turns driving through this tunnel, killing, <laughs> and then going back and forth, back and forth, and until we got it. Man, how did you learn about that? Uh, I don't remember. I think it was the internet. The internet? Okay. Yeah, that was yeah. that was late enough that the internet was pretty solid. Yeah, because it, cause that was... Wait, hold on. 2007? No. 2008. The first Dead Rising? Yeah. I was going to say 2006. Ah, God, you were right. Seriously? August 8, 2006. I thought it was 2007. I'm on a roll. I guess you are on a roll. Dude, 2007, actually, we might need to do an episode about the year 2007, because that was my favorite year for video games. Okay. we'll, We'll get back to that. Uh, for, but yeah, two, 2006 is when it came out, and then they re-released it in 2016. Oh, I vaguely remember that. Anyway. For X- Xbox One and PS4? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. And PC, I think? The trifecta. The trifecta. <laughs> what about the Nintendo Switch, man? What about the Nintendo Switch, man? <laughs> You're like, my point exactly. <laughs> 
So back to time, uh, in a non-critical way, let's let's talk about Persona briefly again because I can't stop talking about Persona. Oh, dude, neither can I. No, ever. we we're all about the Persona. So in addition to exploring the dungeons, the Tartarus, the the Shadow World, the what do you call it, Mementos? Mementos. Yeah. There's also the other other part of the game which is you're you're a high school kid and you have to manage your time and you only have a hundred some days to cram everything you want to do in before the game ends okay yeah and well some of those days are pre-planned out for you i know aren't those the worst when you think oh my god on tuesday i'm gonna go meet up with chihiro again and it's like, no, it's Golden Week. You don't get to do any of that stuff. <sighs> well, especially in 5, man. Morgana is... He just makes me so angry sometimes. Oh, really? See... When he's like, you must be tired. Let's go to bed. I'm like, bitch, I ain't tired. I know. I don't want to go to bed. That's been driving me crazy. I So I'm still in the first, uh, the castle. And I get... I get Kamashitas? Yeah. Mm. And I get back to my apartment quote unquote and there's all this stuff that I'm like dude I, could, I should be picking this up right now because I know it's going to cost me time in the future so just let me do it right now because nothing's happening <laughs> <laughs> and we're and, and they're just like no nope go to bed sorry go to bed go to bed I'm like ugh it's rough go to sleep <laughs> maybe we should go to sleep <laughs> so so this has been going on since Persona 3 right the the whole calendar time where you have set days and within that day you can do usually two actions yeah uh, immediately after school and then at evening right or if you have the day off during the day and then at night yep and that's yeah so that's been happening since three before that they didn't have the time based system or the social links actually so right. there wasn't there, there wasn't, wasn't things that to took do. up the time yeah but instead, they did it in a different way, where they showed interactions with characters differently. Okay, kind kind of. Yeah. If you, it like it, they the way they progressed the story still made sense with the character development, and they developed the character similarly. They just didn't f- make you make that decision; they made it for you. And they were like, "Okay, you're going to be doing something with these people now, and this is going to happen." And versus where you get to decide who do I get to spend who you're time hanging out with. with yeah yep and so okay so in persona 3 4 and 5 you can max out all of the social links in in the time frame technically but there's also like increasing your charm and your knowledge and your bravery and there's just and exploring the dungeons uh there's so many things to do and it i hate it but at the same time i do appreciate that it's making me choose what I think is more important. Which social link do I think is more important? Or which story do I want to hear? Like, uh, well, Persona 4, I didn't I didn't really care about the social links with the team. With the team? Like the main characters? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, Yusuke. I didn't care about him. You mean Yosuke? Yosuke, that's what I meant. That's what I said. Yosuke, I didn't, I didn't care... <laughs> I didn't care too much. I was more interested in in the other. Yeah, because Yuhiko's the best person to talk to ever. No, Chie. Don't I, say Chie. Dude, Chie maxed out so no. fast. No. And then oh, and, no. and then they introduce Naoto so late, and I'm like, oh, I'm trying to get the the death one up with the nurse from the hospital, and I'm trying to max out this other one, and now I have to max out Naoto because she's second best. Okay. You're wrong, but okay. <laughs> I'll let you be wrong in that. Okay, so so how do you feel about that? How how do I feel about what? Uh, the game making you choose one or the other because of this See, I, this sort of semi time restriction. It's like time is that, a resource, and then you have to manage that resource. That's what I like about New Game Plus. So they basically mm. want you to play it a second time, right? And because New Game Plus transfers over your social stats but not your social links right and 
it, that saves you so much time that you can actually focus on getting all the social links the second time through. Plus, they have optional shit that you can do the second time through that you couldn't do the first time. Right. Secret bosses and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so you go into it thinking I'm going to play this game again. So my choices don't mean that much. I'll I'll see it all in the end eventually. No. No. I the first the first time through I definitely put a lot of stock into what I'm doing because okay. I want to try and do everything that I can the first time through, mm-hmm. but I know I'm not going to be able to unless I follow some guide and that's not my yeah, style. That, so that ruins the experience for me too. Yeah, because what's the point in playing a game where they give you all these options to do what you want to do and then do something that somebody else made up for you? Yeah. Like I don't know. Personally, that's how I feel about it, but it I definitely put a lot of thought into what I'm doing the first time through, but towards the end, when things are starting to wind down, and I'm like, okay, I know I'm not going to be able to max out this one, but I can these two. Mm-hmm. I'll go ahead and do those two and not worry about the other one as much because I know that I can Next do it in do New it. Game Plus. Yep. Okay. Okay, so if if that's what the game designers were going for, it seems like it's worked. I feel like it has. Same. So I appreciate that. Uh, I mean, I I appreciate those games on a level that, like, I appreciate some people. So <laughs> <laughs> fair. I mean, they're strong. Yeah. They're strong games. Now, uh, Valkyrie Profile has something similar, and you played Valkyrie Profile, but don't recall this. And I played Valkyrie Profile and stopped ex- like specifically because of this mechanic. I I played it for a small number of hours, two, three, something like that. And then I got to a point where it said you have this many days, I think it says, before the final boss. Now go manage your time and uh and then you'll have to fight the boss. And I <laughs> thought that this was going to give me too much anxiety. So I just stopped. I stopped playing right there. Well, that was your first problem, because Valkyrie Profile is a great game. But I never ran into a situation that I can remember where I felt stressed out because of the time limit. Nor do I even really remember the time limit, so that shows how how little importance it was to (laughs) me when I was playing. Like, I must have not gave any shit about that timer, because I was just like, hey, I'm playing this game. Yeah. So I, maybe I should go back and revisit that because maybe I thought maybe it was you should be a get deal. good. Oh yeah, no this this was before I was any good at at RPGs. I was terrible at them at the time. So I'm still not great. But I, okay, what year do you think Valkyrie Profile came out? Dude, I don't even know. I did not play that game when it came, first came out. December twenty second, nineteen ninety nine, in Japan. August 29th, 2000 in America. Wow. Yeah. That was a PS1 title, right? Yep. Okay. 17? Or, yeah, almost 17 years ago now. Wow. And then it was re-released on the PSP, and that was the version that I picked up and started playing. That came out in 2006, the PSP version really? in America. Okay. Hmm. So you were way late to the game, bro. No, I was super late. I had no idea. PS1 RPGs are lost on me. I played Final Fantasy 7 VII and 8, and I thought 8 was the better one, so that pretty much tells you all you need to know about me. Okay, so <laughs> first off, you're wrong. Yes, And this is what I... Nine, 9 was better than 8. Okay, I've heard this... And That's actually kind of an unpopular opinion, though, so... Really? Okay. But wh- whoever whoever says that is also wrong. <laughs> um, basically, if you disagree with me, you're wrong. Uh, yeah, I've come to accept it. I'm wrong, <laughs> and I'm bad at games. Yeah, that's life. I mean, I'm I'm not good at games, but you know, I'm not bad like you. I'm really good at the bad games, and I'm really bad at the good games. Hey, you want to play me in uh, Marvel vs. Capcom three? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that game has a time limit. Yes, fighting like, fighting games do have a time limit. Um, fighting game, like all fighting games, like 
Unless you set the timer to infinite, which is just boring as hell. But yeah, you yeah, you are set on a timer, and you have to defeat your opponent within X amount of time, or whoever has the least health loses, or the most health wins. Yeah. D- does that mean I'm a pessimistic person if I said the least <laughs> health loses? If I'm thinking about the loser first, rather than the winner? No, that's how you're supposed to think in a fighting game. I don't want to lose. I'm not going to yeah, lose. Fair. The person I mean, I, I wouldn't lose to you, but... Least health is going to lose, and that's not going to be me. That's what you think. I know some people that I would definitely lose to, though. Yeah. At pretty much any fighting game, Yeah, for that matter. Oh, Tekken 7 is is out, and I really want to get that. That's a game. Yeah. That's a game I can spend so a lot fun. of time with. That's for sure. Well, I feel like uh, this is probably a good stopping point before the next time when we talk about time as a game, I guess, plot point, if you will? Yeah, more more like a story mechanic instead of a gameplay mechanic. But I think it's equally as important because oh, yeah. it it shows the different ways time can be interpreted when talking about it, especially in a video game sense. Because mm-hmm. in a video game sense, sometimes you're timed based on the like actual time you have or you, like you have a time travel game like Chrono Trigger or something like that. So yeah, it, it it's interesting to think about. Yeah, definitely. And uh, actually when I went to go look at my shelf for time games, I realized I, I have Chrono Trigger and I've never played it. So I'm going to give that a spin before we record our next episode. For the DS? Uh, PS1. Ah, okay. So you have what? Anthology? Yeah. Or Chronicles? Uh... Chronicles? It's it's Chronicles. Yeah, because it has Final Fantasy Tactics, right? No, it has four uh, or five. It's right here. Oh yeah, Final Fantasy IV Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy Chronicles. That's what this is. Called. Ah, I think you got it right, right? Yeah, I said four first, so we'll go with I was right. Yeah, you're right, as usual. So. Uh, yeah, so you're going to lead that episode, and uh, we're going to have some more fun talking about time. Time. So, looking forward to that. Alrighty. Alright. 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 Alrighty.